Hi, we're back to the weekly why. This week we are making our way through the book of Bamidbar, the book of uh, Numbers. And this week we have Parsha Shalach. Uh, so in this week uh, we have a number of issues. Uh, one is the famous uh, case of the Meraglim, the spies. Uh, the 12 spies who are sent uh, into the land of Canaan uh, to uh, scout the land, check out the land, uh, before the uh, Israelites uh, enter into the land. Ten of them came back with a negative report, two came back with a positive report, and it caused the entire uh, Jewish people to, uh, basically everyone had to die out in the desert, except for two people, the two spies, uh, two scouts who came back with a positive report, Joshua and Caleb, and the rest died out. Um, this parsha also talks a little bit about peace offerings and some other temple sacrifices, as well as the laws of tzitzit, the uh, the uh, fringes uh, that men wear. So this is uh, just a brief nutshell of what the Parsha is. I just want to address something that uh, some people just might have been noticing if you've been following the Parshas and something along this week as well. Just a brief recap of what happened with the uh, the case of the uh, the scouts or the spies. What happens is there's a whole discussion about who was sent, whether they asked. It appears that they were asked to do it. God said, send for yourself as spies. Again, there's discussion why that was, but let's just take the very brief um, superficial reading of it and say that they were told to bring spies, okay? So the, the people were told to bring spies, but they screwed up. They came back saying, oh, we can't conquer the land, the people are, are huge, they're giants, we're like grasshoppers, we'll never be able to do it, that it eats the people up, you know, this land is so tough. So a question that many people would notice reading that is that, like, what's with these Jewish people bitching all the time, right? It, it seems very uh, it seems very strange again you've heard it that you know all these things I've experienced food literally falling from heaven how is it that they've just totally lost this perspective it seems um, you know difficult to wrap our, our minds around that uh, uh, that this is something they just didn't think that God would either be interested in you know in protecting them even though he's done so much for them or that he didn't think he they didn't think that God had the capability to do that. So that's a whole different uh, discussion, but um, the question that perhaps should come to mind is that, like, what's with these Jewish people constantly complaining all the time? How is it that they're just constantly forgetting this, you know? And that uh, I want to get into the idea that it is a human tendency to forget the lessons that we've learned. Um, there's, a, there's an idea that um, in the Torah, when one idea or, or one passage um, or narrative comes before another, there's an inherent meaning in that. So last week, uh, the end of the last Parsha, we ended reading uh, about Miriam, and Moses' sister, uh, having the case of Tsaras, which is kind of like a spiritual um, affliction that she gained for speaking ill of her brother Moses, okay? And that was the case of, uh, that's typically considered to be kind of the um, poster child for Lashon Hara, for, you know, evil, evil speech. And so this week, we have the ten, 10 of the 12 scouts came back from the land of Israel doing the same thing, you know, speaking ill of this land. And so it should be uh, somewhat clear that they're guilty of the same thing as what we saw at the very end of the last passage. And so the whole idea with Miriam is that this was a very public event. Uh, Miriam Saras was not something in the privacy of her own tent that nobody saw, is that the entire Jewish people witnessed this, and that the whole idea is that they could very well have taken taken a lesson from it and learn from it, uh, and they really dropped the ball on that one and they didn't. Uh, now, some people might justifiably point out and say, well, okay, uh, Miriam committed Lashon Hara, she spoke evil about her brother, not only was he her, her brother, but he was Moses, this person of such high spiritual stature, whereas these ten, uh, ten scouts, they spoke ill about, you know, inanimate land, they spoke about, not about people, they spoke about piece of land about dirt and rocks and water, surely that's not comparable. Um, but there was a thinker, Rabbi Yisrael Ordman, and what he suggested was that it's true that people are obviously of a higher stature than, than land, but it's a slippery slope, right? When you're looking at everything from a negative perspective, that something is impossible, something, you know, looking at the worst in every situation, that yes, in the beginning you'll be saying it's a land, but eventually you will just uh, put yourself in the situation where we'll be talking about everyone and everything in the same way. So it's a slippery slope. So if you're doing one thing, you have to watch yourself, otherwise you will eventually be, be doing it about everything else. Now, the Sfas Emes, who was a Polish commentator, he suggests another idea. He suggests that uh, the problem here is that the Jewish people, they had an opportunity to turn a kind of a mundane task into something very extraordinary, really, the, really which is the purpose of the Jewish people in general. 
What he's saying is that they could have turned a very mundane scouting mission into an opportunity for Mitzvah to really, uh, you know, bring the Jewish people some uh, some strength and inspiration, and they really dropped the ball on that one. And so that's the really the 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 whole idea of what our role is as Jewish people, as Jews. That is our our raison d'etre, our entire reason for being, is that our point is to take the physical and turn it into something remarkable, something holy, and something um, sublime, right? So the whole idea is for us not to just not make the same mistakes as the spies, right? Because you could say, well, if the spies didn't go to the land of Israel as spies, they would have avoided the whole situation. So if that's the case, for us, maybe we should just avoid putting ourselves in situations where we need to be taking on leadership, responsibility, things like that. That's obviously not the case. Because if we have a problem, as what the spies did, and again, we still are fixing it today. For example, the rectification of the ten spies who made a mistake, that's the whole reason we have ten men to make up a prayer um, quorum, a minion, right? Is to just simply rectify that problem. So if that had a huge spiritual impact, what these ten men did, simply not screwing up again doesn't fix the problem. We need to actively go out and fix it. So the whole idea is to fix it, is to not simply... Uh, uh, is to not simply not, you know, look for opportunities to do good, but is to actually go out and see how can we turn something um, average and normal into something uh, holy and sublime. So my, my wish and blessing uh, for all of us, myself included, for everybody there, is to really stop and think. Take two minutes maybe after you watch this video, take two minutes before, uh, before Shabbat or when you go into work or school, and just think, what is it that you do every day? You know, anything from you know, making a meal or eating, or even when you, you, know, when you get up in the morning to, to say a small uh, you know, um, Jewish prayer, we say, Modani, just uh, thanking God for uh, putting the breath back in us in the morning. Just look for little opportunities to put that little uh, spirituality and, and connection with God into the things which otherwise would seem so meaningless and, uh, and mundane. Okay, so we're uh, not going to have a weekly why next week, because I will be out of town, but uh, we will pick up the next week after that. Okay, best wishes, Shabbat Shalom, God bless.